Vern, thank you so much for taking the time to do this with us. I know you've probably done a million of these in the last couple of weeks. Couple, a couple. Tell me the, the story you were just telling me about the, the one that's the farthest away. Well, <laughs> yeah, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I got a call from a fellow in Auckland, New Zealand, and he said, uh, let's talk about your last masters. And I said, how the heck did you hear about that? He said, well, we watch you all the time. I had no idea. And the very next day, I got a call from a fellow morning talk show in Melbourne, Australia. Same deal. So, and even as we, this afternoon, I got another request from Toronto, uh, uh, Sports Talk in Toronto, and I told the, the producer that, and I you know, kind of fudged a little bit, but uh, <laughs> I told her that CBS has kind of cut me off. Once we get on site, they want to do it. Can you imagine? Let's do it at 7.30, either Tuesday or Wednesday. Oh, and that's a.m. Nothing and, going on there. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> not at all. Why, why are you so generous with your time with people? Because you have done so many podcasts and so many interviews as we lead into your final masters. Why, why have you been so generous with your time? Well, I think, uh, I think part of being a so-called public person is an interaction with the viewers or the listeners. And I think we owe that to them. And, uh, you know, I, it's, it's it, how much out of my life does it take? You know, 15 minutes. Uh, and if that brings pleasure to somebody, uh, gosh, I'm more than happy to do it. So that's the motivating reason for it all. I, I love being able to tell people you've always been that way, though, because you did that for me when I was a kid. You brought me into a booth for a Cowboys game. Yep. You let me watch your CBS broadcast. You, you've always been so kind and always been that way. And so many people love you oh. in that sense. Does that, is, how fulfilling is that to know that what you wanted to accomplish in those realms, you've accomplished? Well, I, I, it, it gives me a great feeling of satisfaction yeah. that I have not, for the most part, I've not been a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> for the most part, I have my moments. But, but uh, you know, I'm just, as we, we go back so long, so far, I can remember you were a high school junior. We had Thanksgiving dinner at your home, and we talked about where you should go to college. Mm -hmm. And I recommended Syracuse, Northwestern, or Missouri. And you chose Missouri. Mm -hmm. Because if I, if, if I remember, they had an on-campus radio television mm -hmm. station. Correct. And you got a pretty good education didn't and, you? and now every time I see someone from Syracuse and Northwestern I say I didn't even know y'all had a journalism <laughs> school. I had no idea that's what we that's Great. what we know at Missouri um, so as you enter this final masters what are your emotions like uh, mixed yeah kind of bittersweet but I've had a couple of years to pre prepare for this uh, Sean McManus my boss and I had a talk uh, we've had several talks over the <laughs> years but uh, Two years ago, we, we talked about kind of an exit strategy, strategy, strategy. <laughs> I used to be able to talk for a living. <laughs> and and, and uh, uh, Sean and I collaborated on exit st strategy. I'm going to wipe that word. You don't even, I was going to say, yeah, just, yeah. No. let's not try the that The exit one plan. Anymore. Yeah, Ex <laughs> thank you. The exit plan. Uh, we, we decided 2016 would be a good year to step aside from college football, 2017 basketball. And then uh, two years ago, we said, well, he said to me, what do you think? And I said, well, 2024 will make 40. Uh, that's a nice round number. And so we collaboratively decided that this would be the year. So I really, Bob, I've had two years to get ready for it. Yeah. Now, when we get on the grounds, it's going to be emotional. Yeah. There's no question about that. Uh, I think I'm prepared for it. Uh, I know there's a spot. You know you're my, not prepared no, for it. No, of course not. <laughs> there's a little spot on my inner thigh here that I'll, I'll be pinching to keep from <laughs> shedding a tear. I know that. Uh, but, but I have had two years to think about it. And it's the right time. Uh, I'm 83 and quite candidly suffering some short-term memory loss that is a pro product of being uh, north of 80. Uh, and, and I worry it's kind of hard to, to misidentify a pairing with two guys 
I think I can handle that. But, you know, one reason football was, was in my rear, do, rear view mirror was you got 22 guys on the field at the same time, and memorization was uh, so. And 63 other on the sideline oh, come in and out at brother, all times. Yes, you know, and yeah. you've got to memorize the, you know, the depth chart. You got to, why do you have to know the third team defensive tackle? Well, because late in the game, if he recovers a fumble and heads this way, you better know who the heck it is. Do you remember your emotions the first time you went to Augusta? Oh gosh, yes. Yeah. I sure do. Uh, 1983. That was the first time you ever stepped yeah. foot on the property? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. I went to CBS in 82, initially to do college football and basketball. And I got a call December 1st of 82 from New York asking if I'd ever done golf. And I said yes, maybe 10, when I was at ABC. And they said, well, Frank Chikinian likes your work, and he's going to try you on the golf tour. So we got a call on that, that afternoon. Uh, and Frank, first time I'd ever talked with him. I, I'd seen him before at the Colonial, mm -hmm. but not in a working capacity. Now he's going to be my boss. And he said, here's your schedule. And you know, he reeled off four or five, and he said, and Augusta. Well, I'll guarantee you, Nancy and I had a hot tub in our backyard then, uh, there were a couple of bottles of Pinot Grigio that <laughs> went south. We, we did celebrate because I knew what it might mean. And the initial deal was five golf tournaments. And I was on a per event basis. And that first year, I wound up doing 17. And I did, I was a regular part of the golf tour uh, until, well, gosh, mid 90s mm -hmm. when Tim Fincham. Uh, the commissioner of PGA at that time said, uh, we want to have a former golfer on every tower. And I kind of got grandfathered in to, to Augusta and the PGA. So, but our first one was 83, and knock on wood, it was the, the only one that was extended to a Monday in the 40 years I've d done this. Now, I skipped two years. I missed 97, 98. Mm -hmm. uh, we lost the NFL. Uh, 94, I stayed around. Then I took uh, an, op an opportunity to go to Turner Broadcasting. Mm -hmm. So I was absent from CBS for two years, and then came back in 98. So. And 83, your first year doing it, Seve won it, mm -hmm. but Tom Kite and Ben Crenshaw tied for second. That's right. So it makes me wonder if this year that means John Rahm's going to win it and Spieth and Scheffler <laughs> will finish second. But, but in, in all seriousness, you're going to have a moment. There's going to be a moment in this tournament because it's you, because you've, you've had so many great calls in this tournament. And so I want to know how you prepare for it. Because what, what goes, have you said in your, in your preparation, have you said, if this person does something, I have something I'd want to say about them? Or is it all just no, in the moment? No, no, you've got to be reactive. You can't be proactive. You cannot anticipate what's going to happen. You've just got to be a fan, essentially. Uh, that, that's the background of the Tiger Woods call in 05 when he chipped it in. Uh, the unimaginable uh, route that it took and sat on the lip of the cup for 1.8 seconds before it dropped in. <laughs> I know that because advertising, we, Age Magazine, estimated that the accrued value to Nike for that 1.8 <laughs> seconds was in those dollars. 19 million dollars and they they did a campaign ad campaign the the tagline of which was tiger next year next time get the logo straight because it was <laughs> tilted a little bit but no i i just reacted bob uh i was saying what i thought, thought people were thinking i'd never seen anything like that and uh, same thing with jack in 86 you know i was excited as a fan for him the background was amazing. He hadn't won in two years. He had that ugly putter and uh, those, those regrettable plaid slacks. <laughs> you know, I the know. The fashion was a little different. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I know Jack much, much better than I know Tiger. And uh, one, of my, one of my goals at Augusta this year is after the, we have, we, we're lucky. We have friends who are members and we're going to be in the trophy club uh, for dinner on Tuesday night, the night of the champions dinner. And I'm going to wait for Tiger to come down and shake his hand and just thank him for, for what 
his accomplishment meant to my professional career. And I'll, I'll say hi to Jack. And uh, I, I, I know Jack pretty well. Uh, no one knows Jack really well. Uh, but he's as good a man as I've ever met. He and Barbara have uh, an extraordinary marriage. And uh, five kids, and grandkids, and the rest of it. So, but, but the whole week will be a series of highs and lows, I'm quite sure. Is Jack in 86 and Tiger in 05, do more people come up to you and say, in your life, or do more people come up to you and say, wow. yes, sir? Wow. <laughs> I get asked all the time, oh, what's your favorite? Well, it's one and one A, and they're interchangeable. Right. And, I mean, think about it. Jack Nicholas and Tiger Woods, and, and they impacted my career. Uh, to a great degree, mm -hmm. and I'm very thankful for that. I, I'm, you go to an event and you hope something magical or memorable breaks out, and then you hope that you're verbally uh, able, capable of finding words to punctuate or add to the appreciation of the event. And fortunately, in my case, more often than not, I've, I've found the right words. So what's your two? If Tiger and Jack are one and one A, What's, what's like the, the one that maybe nobody, nobody goes to or nobody remembers? Do you have one in your mind that you say, that's a moment that, for me, I will never forget? Yeah, I do have one. As a matter of fact, on Monday night of Augusta, uh, Nancy and I are going to be Scotty Sayers' uh, guests. Uh, they're doing a documentary on Carl Jackson, no. Ben's, Ben no. Crenshaw's longtime caddy. And... Uh, Ben is in, in my top five of most wonderful people I've met. I, I, he's, there's nothing bad about him that I can think of. And uh, when, when, when Ben played his last Masters, he came through 16, and, and we're both graduates of Austin High School. Uh, his older sister, Bonnie, was a year behind me. Ben and I go back. Matter of fact, Bonnie told me about her brother who was in junior high school. and, and uh, that I, he's going to be a pretty good golfer. You might want to do an interview with him. I did. I was at Channel 7 in Austin, then a CBS affiliate, and I interviewed Ben when he was at O. Henry Junior High School. And we've laughed about it over the years because neither one of us can remember what year it was. <laughs> uh, I blame him more than me. I've got memory issues. But, uh, but uh, Ben Crenshaw, when he played his last Masters, he, I was in the tower at 16, and he kind of looked up and, and waved at me in acknowledgement that we, we knew he had announced it was going to be his last one. And I just looked at him, and, and, and he waved, and it just came out. I said, loyal forever. And, and uh, we both remember that moment quite fondly. And then when, when he finished, the Masters champions who lined up to welcome him still brings a tear to my eye. It really does. I, I have a feeling you'll, you'll have a lot of tears this week. Oh. What, what do you want to get out of this final week? Uh, that I do a decent job. Uh, that, that I don't... That, that, that I'm up to the moment. Uh, you know, I've had my... I've had in 40 years, 25 at 16 now, and I've seen, what, what I re read the other day, there are 24 holes in one at 16. I've seen 17 of them. Wow. I mean, that's amazing, including three in one hour mm -hmm. back in, in 2016. Uh, so to be lucky enough for Frank Chikinian to have put me there and, and to then be at that hole for all these years, uh, I can pretty well tell you which way the putt's going to break now. Do you, do you have a sense of what you mean to the golf world? Do you have a sense of what you mean to broadcasters that, that have idolized you for years and years and years, to fans who have idolized you for years and years and years on these calls? Do you, do you have that sense? Do you know that people love you that way? That's, that's, that's tough to answer, but I think so. I think I do, and I have an appreciation for it. Uh, 
it's a two-way street, and I've been greeted with great affection, and I hope I've given it back. Uh, I said a while ago, what does it take, you know, to be kind and be generous and give a little bit of yourself? If that makes someone else happy, it should make you happy. And uh, we both know guys who are arm's length and, you know, get out of my way and sign what? You know, Jack Nicholas, uh, I do have a photograph of, of uh, Jack with a putter raised at 86. And uh, he signed it to Vern, yes sir, with a smiley face. And his, his signature is very legible. And, and I said, you know, uh, congratulations, because we, we all knew too many guys go, Psh! and you can't tell who it is. And Jack told me, Arnold Palmer taught him that. And Arnold said to Jack, if they care enough to ask, you owe it to them to respect them and make it legible so they know whose name that it is. I've got scratchy handwriting, but I've tried to follow that when, when anybody's asked, you know. It's not as good as Jack or Arnie's, but you know, it, you can read it. I've got a book signed by you. I think it's pretty good. Uh -huh. It's a pretty good book signature. Um, I, this is one of the questions I've, I've really wanted to ask you because I'd, I'd love to hear your answer to this. What is more beautiful than Augusta National? Nancy. <laughs> My wife of 42 years is sitting right over there. <laughs> That was an easy one. That, that was, was an easy one. I, maybe that was too. That was too easy a softball. <laughs> that was too easy a softball. Uh -huh. Other than Nancy. Okay. Um, what is more beautiful than Augusta? Like, is there anything in your mind that you ever have come across or seen that matches what that is like? No. Uh, it is the most magnificent piece of property in North America. Uh, and, and I, I think the one thing that surprises people who get to go for the first time ever is the, uh, the, the hilliness of it, uh, the ups and downs. Uh, it's why I thank heaven they give us a golf cart. Mm -hmm. but, but no, I, the only place, the only golf course I can think of uh, would be Pebble Beach and, and uh, maybe Cyprus, mm -hmm. uh, maybe Pine Valley uh, in New Jersey. But in my view, uh, nothing, nothing tops Augusta. Nothing does. Well, you brought up Nancy, so I do want to ask you about what she's meant to you. What, what thinking about going to this incredible place of Augusta and being able to take her with you for this final time and, and it calling, calling. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you'll return, but but what well, what it means. Well, to you. I hope we return. Uh, yeah. Our our plan. I, I can't wait to see what's going to happen next week. My boss is retiring too, mm -hmm. Sean McManus, after 27 years uh, as the head of CBS. But uh, I, I want next week to be fulfilling. And, and then uh, I think Nancy and I will take a, a year off, but then I hope we go back to Augusta. And you know what? I know what Sean's going to say, or David Burson, who will take his place. Good, but it's your dime. <laughs> <laughs> and you pay for your own lodging. Uh, but no, I, uh, I, I, I really want to go back as a spectator, as a patron, uh, to use their phraseology. And uh, uh, because it, I, don't, I can't think of anything professionally that has meant more to the two of us than Augusta National and the Masters. And uh, boy, you know, to, to have this nice round circle. Now, I've done 40. There's this guy named Jim Nance who's done 39. So I'll hold the record. I'll share the record for one year next year and then <laughs> out of sight because Jim is going to work till he's 75. He's 64 now. So he'll, he'll, he'll set a longevity record that I doubt will ever be equaled. Well, I, but I'm going to tell you this. Ricky Williams broke the rushing record in college football in 1998. And he held it for one year, and Ron Dane broke it the next year, and no one remembers that. You're they all right. remember that Ricky broke it in '98. Gosh, yes. And no one remembers that Ron Dane broke it in '99. Yeah. So you've got something going there for okay, you. Okay, <laughs> okay. You can hold on to okay, that. Okay, good. I like that. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you about your golf game. What was the best you ever were in golf? Like, do you remember like a round? Yeah, I do. Of, I do. Yeah, I do. I was a 14 handicap. That's as low as I ever got. 
I played around at Texas A&M with R.C. Slocum. I had that much to shoot 79, and I never touched the hole. <laughs> I got the yips. So I because shot, you knew? Yeah. Because you knew I, it was I knew, 79? Yeah, I, I looked at the scorecard. Don't do that, you know. <laughs> be unconscious and then say, oh, wow, I shot a 79. You should use that this week and when somebody's coming up and say, <laughs> Don't don't think about this. You got a yeah. one shot lead. Yeah, don't they, think you're about right. It. You're right. Yeah, but I've never forgotten that. And RC was a he's a great man, and uh, he just shook his head because he knew too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is this your final broadcast? Yeah. Do you that you won't? There's no. no way that anything the Olympics would never come into play. There's no, nothing I don't. That would ever... I, Bob, I don't think so. Yeah. Again, it's a matter of age. Uh, no, I've had I've had. A, a wonderful, wonderful career, wonderful, ful fulfilling in a thousand ways, and so this will be it. Is so, this is this the perfect way to go out? Of course, of course it is. Vern, thank you. Thank you, Bob. You're amazing. Can't thank you enough for doing this. You bet.